in the previous class we have seen the other main forces right it is only one force will be there that is called resultant force that we are resolving into lift or drag a lift and drag or uh, normal force and axial force okay either you can resolve into lift and drag or normal force and axial force so this is the force we have seen and if you see the flat plate it will be perpendicular uh, perpendicular to the uh, car line the total resultant force it acts perpendicular to the car line but if you take the aerofoil because of its curved nature it won't be perpendicular it is inclined rearward okay in 18th century and all they thought it is perpendicular to the car line then the auto uh, leander the he found it is inclined rearward okay so this you have to remember for flat plate it is perpendicular perpendicular but for the aerofoil it is inclined rearward okay you should not take it is perpendicular and you know that forces is due to the pressure distribution and this is stress distribution so pressure is acting normal to the surface okay so stress is acting tangent to the surface these two are the sources for the forces so in this class we are going to discuss the location of forces so which point the force is acting that's what we are going to discuss and we have two definition one is center of pressure and another one is ergonomic center okay so both are two the, the uh, mentioned the location of forces i will tell you why we need two definitions so if you take the first definition center of pressure so it is like center of gravity okay, if you take an object you know the total weight acts in the center of gravity point right okay so i mean this is a 3d it has some weight okay so the weight will be acting on this center of gravity point but if, if it is the air of file you know air of file is the 2d one and uh, theoretically it has no weight at all okay so here you cannot mark the weight for the air of file and here the total force is acting at one point that point you are calling as center of pressure okay so this center of pressure is almost equal to the center of gravity okay so center of gravity means total weight acts and center of pressure means total force acting on that point is it clear the difference between center of gravity and center of pressure so air foil has no weight so you cannot mark center of gravity for air foil so similar to, uh, similar to the center of gravity we are marking center of pressure so the location on a card line at which the total force is acting okay if the total force is acting on this point then the moment about the point is zero is it correct if the total force is acting on this point then the moment about the point is zero right you understand i should I repeat hello say something i don't know whether you people are connected or uh, okay so this is the definition of center of pressure uh before that i'll explain uh, the center of pressure then we can go for this uh, ergonomic center so like this assume this is the flat plate okay so this is the center of uh, that is the total force acting on the center of pressure okay if it is acting on the center of pressure then there is no additional moment it is in the balanced conditions instead if you are holding that model in some other position other than the center of pressure point what will happen the force will create the additional moment right Oh, okay this you can take it as uh, cg for example if you want okay other than the cg if you are holding that uh, model in some other position there will be additional moment okay similarly this is the cg point as you if you are holding in some other position there will be moment right similar to that center of pressure also only on that center of pressure point if you hold if you place the total force there is no additional moment If you try to hold the model in other other points other than the center of pressure, then there will be additional moment. Okay, that's why in the second picture, they have taken some reference point C by four. C by four means twenty five percentage of the card. Always we will mention in terms of card. Okay, this is the total length card. So we will mention twenty five percentage of the card, fifty percentage of the card. Like that we used to mention. So they mention C by four. That means quarter card point. Okay, so here they place the force in the quarter card point. So we are getting an additional moment. Okay, moment about the quarter card point. Okay, so if you place it on the center of pressure, 
there is no moment but if we place it on the other point other than the center of pressure there will be additional moment is it clear now let's basic only shall i proceed yes sir okay and uh, as i said we have two definition the purpose is if you take the center of pressure for different angle of attack you see the center this is the graph for the center of pressure for different angle of attack okay this graph and you see it is not constant it is varying initially it may be out of the aerofoil okay you see this is the aerofoil trailing edge this is the leading edge for some negative angle it goes out of the aerofoil and zero degree maybe a point 0.7 Either it is keep on varying at certain degree, it comes closer to the uh, quarter cut point. So here and all you see these two point, it is around 0.25 right. At some angle, it coincides with the 0.25. Then after stalling again, it will start moving to the tailing edge. Okay. So the center of pressure location is not constant. So if you vary the angle of attack, the position also will vary. For that reason only, we are not taking the center of pressure to locate the forces. Okay, we are going for the another one definition, the dynamic center. You may ask, what will happen, sir? Why it it should not change? What happen if it is changes and all? Uh, let me explain. This is clear, right? Center of pressure. If you change the angle, four, yes, sir. okay, four four degree they change. You see the location also change from the trailing edge to it moves closer to the quarter cut point. Then again, it moves back to the trailing edge. Okay. And uh, the purpose of location of aerodynamic forces is here. I explain. Assume this is the passenger aircraft. Okay, so you now we in this space only we have the passenger cabin. Okay, and you if you see the uh, passenger aircraft, the center of gravity will be behind the wing. Okay, as all the passengers, even the engine, everything is located in the center region. So the CG point will be in the center of the passenger aircraft, and this is our wing. The wing produces the lift. Okay, then there will be a moment due to this lift and this distance. There will be a moment. Okay, so this is the aircraft. Assume there is no tail. Okay, only wing is there. This is the CG location, and this is the lift location. So this lift creates the moment that is an uh, clockwise moment. Now what will happen if there is no tail in this configuration? Because of this clockwise moment, the aircraft will experience the pitching up moment. Okay, it will go like this, right? If we place only wing, and if it is producing the lift, then due to this moment, we are getting the pitching up. There is a no slope moment we are getting. Okay, to stabilize this only, we are attaching the tail. we are attaching the tail okay so the tail should produce the positive lift so that it can produce the balancing moment is it clear so to keep this aircraft in the steady level flight we are attaching the tail in this case the tail has to produce positive lift so that it can produce the anti clockwise balancing moment okay so that we can keep the aircraft in the steady level uh, flight so depends upon this moment we will fix the distance between the cg and this uh, uh, tail location also how much lift you want everything you can calculate it that's why this location of force is very important is it clear so to design the tail to make the aircraft in the steady level flight you should know the distance then only you can properly find the moment okay then to balance the moment we have to create the Uh, uh, another anti-clockwise balancing moment. So for that, we need the tail. So only if we know this distance and moment, then only we can fix the what at what distance the tail has to be placed. Whether it, it should produce the positive lift or negative lift, okay, everything can be decided. So this point is very important. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes, sir. That's why in all the commercial aircraft, the tail is 
with the positive camber okay so that it is producing the positive lift but if you take the smaller aircraft like a propeller aircraft you know the engine is here okay and the pilot crew everything will be here so the total weight is acting in front of that wing portion okay in the front only we have the cg so this is the cg location for the smaller aircraft and mostly the wing will be attached behind it as in this is the cp uh, cp location this is the total lift now this will produce the anti clockwise moment okay and if there is no tail what will happen this aircraft will experience the pitch down moment is it clear so again we have to go for the design of the tail but in this smaller aircraft you see here already we have the clockwise moment now we have to create, create the anti clockwise moment for that purpose we are attaching the tail with the negative camber so that it can produce the negative lift okay now see this is the clockwise moment okay and this is the balancing anti clockwise moment sorry this is anti clockwise this is clockwise so that we can keep the aircraft in the free level condition that's why in most of, that's why in most of the uh, smaller aircraft we can see the inverted airfoil even in uh, srm hangar we have the cessna right there also you can check the airfoil will be like this the tail airfoil uh, location if you see it will be like this inverted airfoil is it clear yes sir okay so smaller aircraft propeller aircraft and all we have to go for the inverted airfoil tails and if you take the glider mostly the glider is Designed in a such a way that CG and CP are coincident in the same line. Okay, so in that case, we don't want this tail itself because both are coinciding. So there is no additional moment. Okay, so like that only we have to design. But sometimes we will design in some in off conditions also. Okay, in that case we need the tail. But still, even though if it is coincide, both uh, lines are coincide. We need the tail because when other uh, angle of attack conditions are there to do the maneuvers. we should have the control so tail is must but at zero degree angle of attack or in the steady level condition the contribution of tail is nothing so we are going for the symmetrical airfoil so that it won't produce any lift okay so if you are designing the glider so that the cg and cp is coincide at the same point still tail is necessary for the controlling etc and all but we are going for the symmetrical airfoil so that it produces zero lift so that at steady level flight there is no contribution of tail is it clear and other angle of attack for the control definitely we need the tail that time there will be a contribution of tail but at steady level flight then we know we don't want the uh, contribution from this tail if it is coincide if both are coincide or if you design this with some obstacle condition this is cg this is cp then definitely tail is needed depends upon this location so for this purpose only you should know the location of forces then only you can find what is the total moment then what is the uh, balancing moment we need according to that you can design the tail other things and all is it clear yes sir okay and in that case so if you are taking the cp lo cp point to look at the determining forces <coughs> what will happen if you change the angle of attack For a negative angle, it is out of the airfoil. Then, if the angle increases, it moves inside the airfoil. At particular angle, it comes to the uh, quarter guard point. Again, it back, moves back to the trailing edge. Like that, the point is not constant. It is keep on moving if you change the angle of attack. And if the point is moving, then it will be uh, very difficult to find the constant moment. Then, very difficult to fix the the constant the tail position. Okay, so this point should be constant so that we can design the tail properly if this point is moving in this moment also we will see then this distance also we have to vary or something we have to do okay so it is not possible by designing the tail with the movable uh, location of other mean forces that's why we are not going for the center of pressure location to locate the other mean forces we are going for another one point that is aerodynamic center is it clear so we need the fixed point then only we can find the constant moment according to that we can fix the the fixed tail design okay if the point is moving here and there then we cannot find the 
proper moment and we cannot fix the tail properly okay depends upon this moving location this also has to be moved here and there it is not possible so we are not taking the center of pressure to locate the aerodynamic forces we are going for another one point that is aerodynamic center after that clear right hello i should i repeat anything understood sir <coughs> so after this just basic okay so this one be as in the exam and all Okay. So, okay. Before explaining uh, the aerodynamic center, so first I will explain the derivation for the center of pressure. Okay, I will explain derivation for the center of pressure. Then I will explain what is this aerodynamic center. Well, how did we how did we find then the derivation you can see. As of now, we know that the definition of center of pressure. A point on a curved line where the total force is acting, so the moment about the point is zero. For that, we will see the derivation now. Okay. So to derive the center of pressure derivation, so we are taking some uh, some air foil, as in not a two four one two. Okay, at a particular angle of attack, I am taking two condition, ideal case and real case. Okay. So uh, as I mentioned earlier. the total force is acting on the center of pressure okay so instead of r i have taken normal force and axial force because it is easy to fix this is related to the chord line it is easy to fix so i place the total force in the center of pressure location so the distance i mentioned as c x c p actually the distance is x okay so this should be c p x and this distance this x mentions the center of pressure location so it is x cp and this c means in terms of chord okay that's why i mentioned c x cp is it clear the simple explanation from the leading edge to center of pressure location is x so it is center of pressure location so it is x subset uh, cp and c is in terms of chord and the person gave the chord and the person gave the chord like that you have mentioned Okay, so in the ideal case, I position the total force in the center of pressure location. This is our uh, first case. Then, so everything is unknown. Wha what is the known condition? Is for example, maybe I know the Reynolds number or velocity, and I know the profile. Now, car two four one two. I may know the angle of attack like that. Like that, I know all the boundary conditions, but I don't know what is this force. What is this x c p value that I have to find it? Okay. So for that, I am going for the Winterland experiment. So what I am doing, I am placing this same air foil in some force balancing equipment. That is, the equipment will directly will give you the three forces: lift, drag, and side force, and also the three moments: yaw, pitching, and uh, rolling. All the moment it will give you. Okay, it is electronic instrument. So force balance setup. Assume we are placing that in the force balance setup. We got all the forces. That is normal force, axial force, side force, and all the moment we got it. Okay. Ah, uh, let's start. Okay. So I have taken two compare two cases and comparing. First one is ideal case. The total force is placed on the center of pressure location. So this is the force diagram for that. But I don't know the force value, also this distance. So to find this force, I'm going for the internal experiment. So in the internal experiment, some position we have to hold that model. Okay, so we have to fit that model inside the internal. So there should be some holding point. Then only we can fit that model into the internal. So mostly they will take quarter guard point. That is twenty five percent of the card because all that center of pressure, aerodynamic center, it is almost like. Okay, here in the center, everything almost lies closer to this uh, quarter guard point. So any experiment you take, any value you check, mostly they will uh, fix the air file in the quarter guard point. Sometimes it depends upon the uh, geometry. They may take the C by two position or C by three position and all. Okay, if the object is very big, sometimes they can go for the C by two 
or some depends upon the location geometry they will change but most probably they will take only photo card point because we don't know the cp location where is it okay so we have to take some reference point the most uh, used reference point is photo card point so if you take the uh, holding point other than the center of pressure there will be additional movement movement about that point is it clear two cases same error file okay same angle of attack same velocity bounding condition everything is same so i have to find this xcp value okay and uh, this is the force direction you know i don't know i don't know the magnitude but i don't know the i know the direction okay so to find the magnitude i am going for the simulation i have to position the model at some other reference point so i have taken the photo card point as a reference point okay so that using the force balance method i uh, assume i found what is the normal force axial force moment about this point is it clear now i am going to compare these two cases to find this xcp is it clear these two cases yes okay okay so again two cases see our uh, my purpose is to find the xcp okay i have to derive the expression so i have to write some equation the equation should contain this xcp term so which equation you can take so the known values are this n dash a dash that we found it through the experimentation okay and we have to find the xcp now we have to write the equation which relates this xcp and this known forces etc and all so we can write the moment equation right moment is this force into distance right so to relate this center of pressure and the known forces and only one simple equation is possible that is moment equation and that moment equation we can write it with respect to any point but here we are interested to find this distance so i am finding moment about this leading edge point okay so if we find moment about this leading edge point what will happen you know the symbol right clockwise is positive anti clockwise is negative so this force creates the anti clockwise moment that is minus n dash c xcp force into distance is it clear so to find the equation for this xcp i am taking the moment equation so force into perpendicular distance i have taken and there is no additional moment because this is a cp location so it is zero this is the first equation and if you compare the experimental case so where we hold it on the quarter cut point there will be additional moment and here if you write the moment equation about this leading edge point it will be minus n dash c by 4 plus this term is that clear moment equation yes sir okay so i have written the moment equation for both the cases you see both are same air file same angle of attack same velocity etc and all then the forces acting on it will be same then the moment created any at any reference point also will be same okay so this is equal to this one okay only the holding position change according to that you may get the additional moment okay but overall moment created by this force system force moment system will be equal okay so in that case the uh, both air file producing the same moment on this leading edge point is it clear same air file same boundary conditions so same amount of force is generated by for by both air file okay so the moment created by the force system also will be same so in that case these two equations are equal and now you see through the experiment we found the n dash we found the uh, moment about the photo card point the distance also known photo card photo uh, card point once you know all these three value you can find the moment about the leading edge and it is equal to this equation so we know this value and this side again n dash already we found it c also you know 
then you can find the xcp value this is the idea is it clear okay so all our known value we can find moment which is equal to this situation here also so of course we know the total chord length we know through that we can find this xcp distance by comparing these two equations for that only we are taking ideal and uh, real because in the ideal case everything is unknown so we are going for the simulation to find the forces is it okay but this is not the derivation still we have few more steps but up to this is it, is it clear yes sir okay and uh, so even though with this step itself you can find the center of uh, pressure location but you know derivation means the final equation should be the in the simplest form with the uh, un, with the known uh, parameters okay so but this is not the simplest form so you have two equations you have to substitute many things to simplify right so derivation means the final form should be the simplest form so that you can easily remember and uh, substitute the values so what we are doing we are going to compare these two equations okay to further simplify this we are going to compare these two equations so here they compare ideal case and experimental case so what we need is the xcp so keep it on the left side remaining you take it to the right hand side So if you do it, you will get minus n dash c by four. Okay, then this time you write it. It will be plus n dash c. Then last term n dash c by four, right? No, no, no. Sorry, it is multiplication, right? It is multiplication, right? Sorry. So x is the alone in P P here. These two terms we have to divide. So that's what here they mention. So if you divide, you can cancel this n dash c. So remaining you will get one by four. And here you cannot uh, cancel anything. So simply minus sign will be there. Minus n dash c will be equal to the n dash c. Is it clear? We equated, and we are finding x p. Simple rearrangement. Cancel n dash c. You will get this equation now. Let's see it. But still, this is not the final version. We are going to further uh, refine it because what are the experiment you do? The final result. The final result we will not write in terms of lift and drag. We will write in terms of coefficient of lift and coefficient of drag, because the experimentation is mainly to test the the original condition. Right? For example, if you take the real aircraft wing, okay, assume the car length of the real aircraft wing is uh, maybe ten meter car length, and span of the wing is uh, maybe forty meter, for example. Okay, this is the real aircraft wing. And this produces the lift of assume ten kilo newton. Okay, just example I'm telling. Or uh, just take thousand newton. It is uh, taking. And now I want to do the experimentation for this wing model, but I cannot fit this much big big uh, big wing in the wind tunnel. So we are going for the scaled down model. Assume I'm taking the small scale model with a chord length of ten centimeter. Okay, maybe. Point one meter and the span of four meter. Okay, point four meter. Okay, this much small model I have taken in the wind tunnel for the same boundary condition, same angle of attack. If I find the lift, it will not be equal to the thousand, right? It may be like ten newton or something else, right? So directly you cannot compare. These lift forces, because the size is reduced, value also reduced, so it it won't give you the uh, proper comparison. So instead, what we are using is the dimensionless numbers CL and CD. 
okay so if you find the cl for this thing it may be around like 0.5 you take okay and you are going for the small scale model you are going for the simulation with the same boundary condition there also if you find the cl will be the same value now you can easily compare okay for this type of comparison you are going for the dimensionless number cl and cd so any research paper you take any book you take the final output of experimentation will be uh, cl and cd only okay for particular angle we will give what is the cl value what is the cd value what is the moment about the reference point it can mostly it will be c by 4 sometimes it may be c by 2 also okay this only maximum they will mention is it clear this one so if the shape is same and the boundary conditions are same that is reynolds number angle of attack everything is same you will get the same cl we no need to worry about the size okay that's why we are going for the dimensionless number is it clear the output of the experimentation will be for example if you take here a file it will be cl cd cm everything is the coefficient of process shall i proceed hello hello yes sir i am in some sleeping mode or what is it boring Hmm? Actually, first unit uh, at least we have a lot of concept and uh, some uh, problem and all. In remaining units, it is full of derivation with a lot of assumptions. Okay, so it is little bit, what is it? Uh, boring only. Remaining uh, derivation and all. Hmm? So concepts will be there, but again, lot of derivations will be there, which are used in the very olden days. So don't sleep. So here, so X is the up to that we we define. But in the experiment, what we are getting is the C L C D C M R C N C A C M like that. Only coefficient of forces we will get it. So in converting this term further into coefficient of forces and moment. Okay. So simply divide this by Q by C square. You know the force, right? If it is n dash, then it will be half rho B square. Two D R F I means area is only C into C n, right? So C n is n dash divided by half rho B square C, and this half rho B square is the dynamic pressure Q infinity. Just we are using different notation. So this is for C n. Okay, but if we take the moment. You know the moment is the force into distance. Here the distance is the card length. Okay, so for the moment you will get additional one c uh, that is c term. So here if you find the uh, force in the moment, it will be moment divided by q infinity c square because there is additional c distance force into distance. Okay, so force means simply n does divided by q infinity c. Moment means m by zero by q infinity c square. Okay, one c is the just distance. Is it clear? So to convert this term, I'm dividing both the term by q by c square. So here we can cancel c and c. So you will get one by four minus m by q c square. Here m is by Infinity C, so this is C M, this is C M. We will get this equation finally. One by four minus C M C by four divided by C M. Is that clear? So we compared two moment equation, ideal and uh, experimentation. So same error file, same force, moment also same, and we are finding X C P. So all the results will be in terms of coefficient of force and moment. So we are converting this moment and force to in terms of coefficient. 
that's it this is the final equation and as i said mostly the results will be given in terms of cl cd cm only depends on the location this cv4 will vary but here what we have is the cm so what you have to do from the post diagram we derived the cl cd in terms of so you see this uh, force diagram we can we found initially lift in terms of normal force and axial force right the same way you can find normal force in terms of lift and drag that is <coughs> lift and drag we have to resolve in the normal direction so that you will get normal force in terms of lift and drag then you can write in terms of coefficient you will get this situation Okay. So using the force diagram, we can write C N and C A in terms of C L plus C L and C D. C A is not necessary here; only C N is required. So in the simulation, they will give a different alpha C L C D C N C V four. So you have to substitute the C L C D, also the alpha value. We can get the C N that you have to substitute here, and C N C V four directly you can substitute. With that, you can find the center of pressure location. So this is our final model, final equation. Is that okay? So we repeat any steps. Hello. Hello. Where are you? Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Sometimes, as I said, they will take different uh, reference point to hold the model. For example, C by two, if they are if they are taking, then we have to modify the situation. Nothing but instead of one by four, we have to take one by two. Okay, minus C M C by two divided by C M. Instead, if they have taken reference point as C M C by three, then your X C T equation should be one by three minus Cm Cv3 divided by Cm. Okay, so depends upon the moment uh, value at which reference point it is measured. You have to change your uh, formula also. One by four, one by three, one by two like that. 